it's over. The Breaking Bad universe <laughs> has come to an end after 14 years of pure excellence, pure amazingness. Well, you know what they say, everything has to come to an end at one point or, no or another. And that includes the good things too. So, it's, it's, it's all gone, man. It's all gone. Better Call Saul ended. Wow. Okay, so, <laughs> this is my review of the whole show. I'm not gonna go into detail about uh, the first five seasons, not a lot, but I'll be, you know, diving deeper into season six. So, you may or may not know I am a die-hard Breaking Bad fan. I, from the first time I was introduced to Breaking Bad, I was in awe. Every single episode brought development, amazingness, and quality. And it reached a level that I didn't think anything would surpass it. It still is, to this day, the uh, one of the three favorite shows of mine. The other two being Attack on Titan and Avatar The Last Airbender. But nonetheless, it shares that spot with them. <sighs> so, as I was saying, Breaking Bad was basically a perfect show. From beginning to end, especially the ending, it felt complete, it felt, um, it felt just perfect. I wouldn't think any other word apart from perfect. So, I was aware of a Better Call Saul, but I did not jump into it, uh, you know, until season five began airing and finished. After season five ended and released, the whole of it, I, you know, that was, at the, at the time, I was just finishing Breaking Bad, I was like, oh, okay, perfect, five seasons of a prequel cool show of one of my favorite characters from Breaking Bad, Saul, amazing. I didn't have any high expectations because, obviously, <laughs> I didn't. I wasn't expecting to surpass perfection that it was Breaking Bad, but I was like, okay, I have faith in Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould to pull up something interesting and something enjoyable, to say, at, at least enjoyable. I would say with with complete confidence that Better Call Saul is a masterpiece, an undeniable modern 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 masterpiece. It was. As good as Breaking Bad in many aspects, but I would say some aspects were even better. Overall, I do think Breaking Bad is a superior show. I do think the highs of Breaking Bad are a bit higher than the highs in Better Call Saul. With that saying, I do believe <laughs> that the highs of Better Call Saul are pretty fucking high. Uh, and a few things... Better Call Saul did better, which are, in my opinion, the character development and the cinematography. I know. Uh, it's obvious if you've seen it, but they, uh, Peter Gould and Vince, Vince Gilligan surpassed themselves in Better Call Saul in terms of writing, in terms of storytelling, in terms of character development. Breaking Bad introduced one of the greatest casts of any show stacked incredible characters incredible villains from top to bottom but better call Saul expanded and added on that list in break and uh, in, in better call Saul, you see amazing characters like chuck like i would say even howard is a developed character i would say that lalo salamanca is the best villain in the breaking bad universe and if you don't see better call Saul, you're not gonna see one of the one of the best, if not the best, characters in the universe. So you're missing out, believe me. If you haven't gotten to Better Call Saul yet, I highly recommend you do so. So let me start by saying what, what my favorite season is, what I think is the worst season in the show, and basically my thoughts on the ending. I will talk about some few spoilers, especially, mostly season six. But the other seasons are safe, so yeah. Mind you, if you're wanting to go into the show blindly, do not watch this video. I will mention some things that will slip out of my mouth. 
But at this point, if you've been watching, you've already given me a view. So yeah, I'm joking, okay? Don't def don't send me death threats. So anyway, the worst season of the show is the second one, in my opinion. But on its own, it was still good. I do believe that season six, the newest season, is the best. Yes. I do believe that season six is not perfect, but it was the best in my opinion. From Nacho's death, which was the best episode in the entire show, in my opinion. Rock in a Hard Place, the episode where Nacho dies, spoilers, is the best episode in the show, in my opinion. It surpasses everything. Uh, in, in Better Call Saul, not in Breaking Bad. <laughs> the way he went was poetic. It was like, the, the beginning of the episode starts off with a blue uh, desert flower. And around it is just like misery. Uh, you know, some, some very ugly shots of, I don't know, trash or something. And then, oh, god damn it. Great. Anyway, I've been very in demand, I guess. Anyway, uh, it was poetic how he went. From the beginning of the episode, as I was saying, the desert blue flower growing out of some... Uh, they're just showing it like that randomly. I was like, okay, that's supposed to mean something, I guess. And that was the... That flower grew on the place where he died. Where he shot himself. Yes, Nacho killed himself. He was backed into a corner. He couldn't do anything. If you've seen the show, you know what situations, what situations he was pulled into. His only goal was just to save his father. Nothing else. His life was discarded. It was already too late for him. He couldn't do anything else. So yeah, he just made the best decision he could at the moment and shot himself. But now before, he pulled the most badass, the most impactful monologue in the whole universe of Breaking Bad. When he was talking to Hector. He's like, I put you in that chair. And from now on, from the, to the, from the rest, you know, from now on till the rest of your miserable life, you'll think of me, you twisted fuck. While you're s sip sipping down your drinks and eating your jello, you're going to think of me. I put you in that chair. Oh, I switched, I switched your heart meds to, for, to sugar pills. <laughs> it was beautiful. The act and look, Michael, Michael Mando, the actor, who also played Voss in one of the best games of all time, Far Cry 3, deserved, in my opinion, an Emmy nomination. But sadly, three episodes weren't enough for him to be warranted one, unfortunately. I, I do think he deserved it. Love, yeah, he was, his acting was brilliant, anyway. And from that point, I was like, okay, episode three already, the best episode in the show. It surpassed Bagman, which was previously, in my opinion, the best one. And I was like, okay, how could this be topped in any way, shape, or form? Well, in my opinion, it didn't. But in terms of quality, it did. Like, look, the next three episodes were a drop in quality, but still interesting, very intriguing, and in developing the plots and the situations. Uh, and then... <laughs> and then came episode seven, Plan and Execution. Whew. In terms of quality, that may be probably the best episode in the show. In terms of quality. It's not my favorite. As I said, my favorite was Rock in a Hard Place. Where Nacho dies. But I do acknowledge Plan and Execution as... Yeah, the best episode in the show. Fuck me, that was amazing. From the beginning to end, that was, cinem that was, that was a cinematic masterpiece of an episode. Yeah, Howard. Poor Howie. At the wrong place at the wrong time. The schemes Jimmy and Kim, or I mean Saul and Kim were pulling for the whole season finally came to a <laughs> bloody end when Howard got shot by Lalo. <laughs> wow, that was insane. And by the way, Lalo, I just need to say, as I, I said previously in the video already, that he is the best villain in the Breaking Bad universe. He was a fucking fiend, a force to be reckoned with. But that also comes at a handicap that the writers did to themselves but i'll mention that later in the next episode 
there was uh between plan execution and point and shoot which was the next one there was a two month break a two month hiatus of anticipating what's going to happen to lalo and to everybody involved basically basically only kin <laughs> we know what happens to the rest of them but anyway the next episode came the death of lalo came his demise expectedly it was not, it was the question wasn't will it happen the question the question was when will it happen and that question was answered and people were saying it was it was a mixed bag of emotions because point and shoot was as good as an episode uh, uh you know with plan and execution in terms of quality it was amazing the whole episode was amazing but it was one thing that bugged me and that was Lalo's death not the fact that he went because that was expected for him to go but how see gus got the most epic most memorable death in my opinion in the whole breaking bad universe but Lalo proved himself to be the most cunning, the most smart, the most fucking fiendish fucking force of unstoppable misery. <laughs> he was more dangerous, more unrelenting than Gus and anybody in that universe. And for him to go in a split second lucky fucking shot by Gus was a bit underwhelming. It was well made, it was well shot, it was well acted. Especially Gus's monologue talking about Don Eladio and all of the Salamancas how, and how he hates them, basically. And that basically, you know, gave him a chance to shoot or kick the the maintenance and turn, turn off the lights so he could get a gun that he put on the ground just in case, just in case. And he used it to shoot Lalo in a split second lucky move. Yes, Lalo died laughing, because that's, because that's Lalo, and it was in character for him. The whole scene was filmed brilliantly, but the whole the death of Lalo was like a bit underwhelming, I would say. A bit un underwhelming. That said, 8 episodes into season 6, and I already said, and I, and, I, and, I, and I still think that season 6 had the most impactful moments in the whole show. I think, as impactful moments go, I think I would put Werner Ziegler's death as one of the most impactful. Chuck's monologue in the, in, uh, at the bar hearing. Uh, what a sick joke! And he gets to be a lawyer! Oh, wow! The, yeah, that when he, when he, that was just Chuck's mental breakdown in front of everybody. That was one of the best scenes, too. And yeah, I would say that season six had the most impactful moments in the whole show. In my opinion. And then the next episode came. And you see what happens to Kim and, and Saul. They, they, they break up. And they finally said to one another. I love you. Even though <laughs> the irony is. That it was their breakup. <laughs> well yeah. Uh, when, kids, when Kim said uh, to Saul. That together they're poison to everybody else around them. And yeah she's right. She's right. But it turns out. <laughs> Saul is a poison to everybody. <laughs> Uh, as we know in Breaking Bad, what happens? So basically, after Fun and Games, Fun and Games was the episode that concluded every single Better Call Saul storyline all in one. It cleared Nacho's storyline, where uh, Mike went to talk to his father and, you know, review what happened to his son. Uh, Gustavo clearing everything up, finally, with Lalo and everything else. Kim and Kim and Saul breaking up, pretty much every single uh, storyline that was set up in Better Call Saul was finished and complete in the episode Fun and Games. That was when Better Call Saul ended, and then <laughs> it became Gene Takovic's demise, <laughs> downfall. The next. Three episodes, four episodes, I think. Yeah, four. Yeah, four episodes, maybe. Yeah, four episodes or three. I don't know. I'm, I'm horrible at maths, and, and I'm retarded to to boot. What a wonderful combination! Uh, the last episodes in the show were basically showing they were we they were they were weaker than the last, but still well made in terms of cinematography and build up. 
Yes, they were slower than usual, but they were still well made and they were not bad. They were not bad at all, but they were weaker than the first half. So, uh, Gene Takovic, <laughs> he could not escape himself. He cannot break out of the Saul Goodman persona. He cannot escape from himself, from his true nature. So he built up a ragtag group of people, you know, and they just decided to work and rip off and scam people to, to get their money. And some things went wrong, one thing went to another. And the mother of one of the guys uh, he was working with found out that he was Saul Goodman. <laughs> and she called the police on him. And now we're talking about the ending of Better Call Saul. The last episode called Saul Gone. So... The episode was a masterpiece. It concluded every single thing, every single lingering question you had was answered and finished. There's nothing more to add to this. You saw Marie coming back, talking about Hank and Steve Gomez. You see Saul trying to, you know, to limit his sentence to as, as much as he can, and in the end, it was seven years. Seven years for all the things he's done. And yeah, it was like, wow, he did it again. He fucking did his magic trick, and now he will spend not a long time in prison when you're comparing to all, all the crimes he's committed. But yeah, he he decides to pull a complete 180 uh, and say the truth, that Walter White wouldn't be, would be nothing without Saul Goodman that he willingly helped him build his drug empire, that he did all of this stuff and more because he wanted to, out of own free will. He was not a victim. He changed his mind. He decided to say the truth. He decided to own up to everything he's done in a glittering fucking fashion. He did not care. He said, I'm going down. I'm going to go down beautifully and say the truth. He, he confessed. <laughs> Even though that wasn't his crime, he confessed that Chuck McGill, his brother, died because of him. He killed himself because of Jimmy, because of Saul, because of himself. He, he mentioned Howard. He mentioned everything. He spilled his fucking guts. And yeah, many people would say that it, that was out of character, sure. But I think that was honorable of him. He was like, fuck it. I'm done lying. I'm done scamming. This is the end for me. And I'm going to say everything I feel on my fucking chest. Come what may. And he does. He does it beautifully. And you see him in prison. Not seven years. But 87 years. 87 years in prison. He will die there most certainly. And yeah. The last scene where he just points and shoots at Kim. While she's walking away. Was poetic. It was beautiful. It was phenomenal. And so it comes to an end, an amazing era of TV, an amazing era of cinematic quality, quality of writing, quality of character development. The best universe ever to exist, in my opinion. The best cast of any show I've ever seen. And yeah, what a wonderful journey it has been. I wasn't as long as many people were on it. I wasn't at the beginning of it. The only season I was following episodically and weekly waiting the episodes was season six, was the last season. But I can count myself in by saying that Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad are both masterpieces and will always be remembered through decades and centuries even to come by our children. Not mine. Positively not mine, but yours maybe. So yeah. That's my review of Better Call Saul as a show and season six, diving in deeply. If I would give it a score, I would give Better Call Saul a 10 out of 10, a masterpiece of our modern era. I still think Be uh, Breaking Bad is slightly a superior show, but I do acknowledge Better Call Saul for everything it is. And what it is, is a, it's a complete another masterpiece that will always be remembered by me and many people. So, that's what I think. Thanks for watching, and I finally made a Better Call Saul video. I wouldn't live with myself without mentioning this show on my channel, and yeah. 
Well, let's say one regret is not existent anymore. <laughs> Thanks for watching once again. Many more games incoming, many game walkthroughs incoming, many moments that we will share together are coming to this channel. So, I hope you stay tuned, hope you stay interested, hope you stay invested. And yeah, if all is well, then, then all is well, <laughs> simply. Stay safe, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.